hello guys i hope you're doing fine and having a great time today we will start with a little bit of show off <laughs> so basically this is my um google scholar profile which you can see and um here there are a lot of uh, a, a lot of work published related to the kind of videos which i upload is here so usually if you will look at um, if you will search my name Faisal Kayyum in Google Scholar you will be able to find me and look at all these publications which are related to uh, what I show in my videos and here you will be able to see how those um, little bits of pieces can uh, be coupled together to uh, simulate the physical phenomena and really understand some underlying principles happening uh, during the thermomechanical fatigue uh, simulations and today i want to start with something um, quite uh, small and mundane but uh, i got requests to um, share how that is done and i want to talk about this 3d numerical simulation of thermomechanical fatigue damage in wedge samples so basically in this research what we did was we ran simulations on this wedge sample i don't know if it is available for free probably not but here you can see the um, um, the graphical abstract of this article and um, yeah good times when the graphical abstracts were quite simple and here basically you see a wedge a 3d wedge with a crack at um, on the tip and we um, developed this numerical simulation model with a 3d crack and by defining a thermomechanical uh, by defining a thermal uh, cyclic load on this tip with uh, the wedge being cooled from the bottom and then we could see the crack uh, initiating and crack growth and uh, not crack initiation but we defined a very small crack in the in the beginning and then crack growing inside the wedge and then looking at at the stress intensity factor on the crack tip while moving in the 3d and it was a really really nice work which eventually got published in um, engineering fracture mechanics and you can always look at this article and this is available for free on my research gate profile so this is my research gate profile if you will look at it and yeah it is available for download here on this profile would be quite down because there have been a lot of publications after that but yeah um and you can always look at it and see how um what results did we get in 3d simulations but today what i want to do is i um want to develop a simple model a simple model um, which I have already done before uh, for a 2d case of um, crack definition today I will do it for 3d crack definition um, in a 3d sample and then you can couple all the pieces together with other um, um, tools and tricks which I have taught before how to define thermal load how to define mechanical load you can change your geometries you can apply certain boundary conditions you can add um, residual stresses uh, by defining predefined fields and you can basically simulate whatever you want to uh, but today I will just be um, pointing out uh, to the basics of how to define a 3d crack so basically to define a 3d crack you have to understand that the 2d seam will become a 3d seam and we will have to protrude everything through the sample but eventually um, that is something which we are looking for so um, i have done this quite a long time ago uh, i'm doing this let's say for the first time on hands so we will make some mistakes we will learn along the way and um, yeah it will give me an idea to revise everything and it will give you an idea to see how uh, simulation 
definition and modeling works um, and I basically do not want to publish very refined well structured finished simulations that this is how it's done I start from I, I try to start from scratch because this is how I think um, people learn more and effectively and efficiently so um, yeah uh, let's start um, I just want to say that the video can be quite long so please be patient but um, if you think you already know something you can just skip that part and move to the part which you want to learn but I want to upload a complete version of um, starting from scratch and um, running a 3d crack uh, simulation so anybody who is following this who has just installed a backus and wants to run the simulation can do it hmm. okay so to start with i want to define a part now it would be a 3d part i would name it 3d block um, and then it will be deformable and it will be solid and it will i'll construct it using extrusion an approximate size would be around um, two because I want to make it in meters. Um, oh, uh, so it, uh, it cannot be a number first, and then I want to construct a, a scare profile. So let's make it um, 30 centimeters, 30, or let's say 50 uh, millimeters on this side. Oh man. Yeah, 50 millimeters on this side and 50 millimeters on this side. Okay, so we have this and then I want to extrude it for twenty um, millimeters. So we have this block um if you want to simulate hmm then i want to define my material so my material would be steel with let's say just elastic properties of young's modulus of 10 gigapascals and poison's ratio of 0 0.3 um hmm and then i want to define my section which is homogeneous which I will call steel and hmm, and I want to assign this section to this block done okay hmm. so now this is a steel block with only elastic properties um, now this is where the tricky part begins so what i want to do now is i want to go back in the part and i want to um section it the question is should i section it in assembly or should i section it here i think it would be a better idea to section our part or assembly but for example if i have um, if i have multiple parts um i don't know so we can we can i think section it here and then we will see what happens so initially what i want to do is i want to um, uh, make a section here um, um, let's break it down into small things so what I want to do is I want to 
section it so for the case of 2d you know that when we section it we only section the face and the crack is defined here but here what we do what we will have to do is we will have to section a face and then extrude all the lines inside so this whole block is sectioned so the crack goes through it and everything goes through it and then we will have to define the mesh and everything later which is the longest tricky part but that's the mm, disadvantage of using a 3d block than a 2d block it has its own advantages when it comes to simulations but um yeah um, modeling it is not easy that's why we usually don't do it um let's section it and then you will see along the way how things are getting along i want to section this face when i select done it asks me to select an edge or axis that will appear vertical on the right so i want this to appear vertical on the right okay um then i want to uh, just uh, draw a simple section what i would do is draw a sketch line um draw an initial crack on it um let's see how long is it if it was 50 i would want to make it at least um 20 20 e minus 3 okay so this is the initial crack that i would want to do is as um you can see what i've done in the 2d video which i will link here um we draw two circles one is the middle one which should be equal to a small crack tip seems legit uh, and then a bigger one which should be at least five times the size of the smaller one um i just want to check their geometries um uh, uh let's make it if it is 20 let's make it um 2.5 oh no oh no Um, and make the bigger one multiple of five zero point zero 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 two five multiplied by five is zero point zero zero one two five is zero point zero zero one two five. This is quite small so what i would usually do is i would make it a bit bigger i want to make it two is that enough seems okay we can make it a bit more bigger uh yeah seems okay um we can make this one a bigger as well. Uh, three, apply. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to connect these two dots. It is important to have these two dots on this line, and it really help because it really helps in meshing later, and you will know why um, later so now our section is complete done so you see that we have made a section on this face but if i look at the other side there is nothing on this side so it is only you can say a section or i would say a drawing on this side and now what i want to do is i want to extrude it through the sample so the crack is as it should be in 3d so what i would do is i would select this partition cell um, i don't know 
create partition cell um, extrude and sweep edges um, because I want to extrude these edges into the sample um, I would rotate it a little so I can see this and this edge and then select one or more edges in the same plane let's select this edge extrude along direction straight edge so this is the edge I want to extrude into okay create partition so this line has been extruded now I want to do it again um, extrude along direction okay create partition and uh, huh now the problem comes there um, I don't know select the cells to partition so now it would ask me which cells do I want to partition I want to partition these cells select one or more edges extrude along direction okay create partition hmm because I selected this line which is free so it would not uh, extrude it I would have to select them individually select the cells to partition I want to partition this select one or more edges to partition <laughs> let's select this circle done extrude along direction the direction of extrusion is this one okay create partition okay now I want to create partition in this select one or more edges this one done extrude along direction the direction is this one okay create partition okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is done and then I want to partition this uh, select one more edges this one done extrude along direction this is the direction okay create partition now it should look the same on the other side so let's see oh this line is missing here so we still have to extrude this select the cells to partition this select one or more edges this done extrude along direction this create partition okay mm -hmm yeah seems okay now it has been um, extruded all along so this perturbation is also inside the sample which we will see interestingly later which will come into play when we will have to mesh it <laughs> that would be another tricky part but yeah for now it's done now we want to make an assembly and we want to import this instance here um mesh on part okay no issues because the features are quite far i would delete it so we can have our whole block here and then i want to define a crack so the crack let's name it just crack it is a contour integral crack and then it asks me to select the crack front which basically is a line inside and I do not know I, I and I have to select that whole line not a point so basically what I would do here is select edges and then not on the sample but inside the sample and then what I would also want to see is this um, yeah so this hollow view um, you can open up this 
um, toolbox from the view uh, toolbar toolbars and then select open them all and put them here so you can you're able to choose it and then what I would like to do is so this is my crack front you see the line is coming from there and it is through all this sample and this is my crack front now it was much easier in case of um, 2d because it was just a point but now it is a whole line and i have to select a whole line if i select only this point then it will not work for me and selecting this line is a bit tricky so what i did was i selected that i want to select edges not all because then it would only give me an option to select an edge and then i also selected that i want to select an edge from inside the sample not outside the sample not all of the sample but inside the sample and only then I was able to select this line very conveniently and quickly I want to press done and then it asks me specify the crack extension direction and then I want to define it according to the Q vectors and then the Q vectors are it can be simple so this is the initial point and then this is the next point and then you see that the crack would be extended in this direction which is right on singularity um, okay so it says that singularity we cannot do it on uh, dependent so we have to make it independent and then after making it independent i want to do with 0.24 this is just a parameter i don't know how this works but it works for metals um and so collapsed element side duplicate nodes and then this is the q vector so we have defined a crack now i want to define a crack seam so if you remember we have to go into special crack assign seam and now the seam is faces that's right uh, in in the case of 3d um, and what we have to do is we have to select all these faces which is this one and then this one and then this one so if I look at it from the side let's say this um, yeah so if I look at from the side it is a whole um, crack but if I look at from another perspective I have selected I have basically selected all the faces here um, yeah so this is the seam now well most of the part is done um, I would like to see the whole sample again um, um, one of the most interesting things is done and now what I want to do is I want to define um, just a simple boundary condition and just a simple uh, loading condition and we are good to go after meshing um, as a boundary condition I want oh f first of all I have to define a step so I will just define a static general step named load and um, initial should be 0 0.1 maximum is 0 0.1 number of increments is 1000 it would be a very simple simulation so no worries it will solve in 10 steps um, I have talked about all these parameters all these things in quite in detail in the previous simulation uh, in the previous videos which I have uploaded so if you just want to take a look at why I am defining these things so quickly is because I assume that you have already watched the other videos and you already have following from them and that therefore you are here for a 3d crack simulation if you have not watched that I would highly recommend that you go and watch the basic simulations for crack modeling and crack definition before you follow this one and and I'm doing this quickly because I still want to shorten time a bit and 
put it in def showing how 3d cracks are done so then i want to define in the initial steps mm, let's say uh, in in cast up this edge region of boundary condition hmm. this is interesting so once I have I had selected uh, this internal surface it was still selected and it was not possible to select this outer surface I remember falling into this trap and then not knowing what to do and why it is not selecting this outer surface for a very long time and then I later realized that I had to open up this um, so yeah don't don't please do not make this mistake um, so I want to encast this and then I and, and I want to extend this in positive y direction for quite some load so I would say in the load step displacement of this edge in the two direction let's say 10 mm mm, and it is ramp okay um, so this has been defined now the only thing that is missing the only thing that is missing now is mm, the mesh and meshing a 3d component like this is um, quite a um, quite an issue but we'll see mesh controls I want to mesh this as a wedge and then I want to mesh these two as a hexagonal structure and then I want to mesh this as hex dominated I will guess um, hmm. um, then the most tricky part is to uh, to define here the the nodes and seeds I don't know how that would work I'll just take a few notes and see how this is done but I want to define here on this I want to define um, by number do not allow number of elements 20 or 50 each so total it would be a hundred uh, or 40 each seems um, let me make it like this so it is easier to see hmm um, seems 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 okay so 40 I will write that down um, and then I want to define this by one so this has only one section and then we will see how many to define here by number let's, let's start with 20 and then apply single bias ratio where I want to flip this bias apply and okay it is not quite good this seems okay so 25 and bias is Seven, ooh, five, twenty-five, six. 
seems good so the distance between these two is somewhat similar to these two and the difference between the distance between these two is somewhat close to these two I would make it a bit more so now it should be yeah so now it has been mesh so it is 25 with bias of 7 and then we want to match uh, this seam uh, with the number of elements close to what we observe here or slightly bigger so let's say 30 uh, 50 I'll make them 50 yeah so there are 50 here and then what I would like to do is I would like to um, make the same number of elements on these edges all along so if I select all these edges I want to define 50 or or 30 elements here and then for the rest I would define approximate global size of 0 0.25 0 0.15 yeah okay and if I miss it then okay so this seems to be meshed then I would like to select all these regions and standard linear 3d stretch reduced integration let's mesh it and see what we get okay so we have a really nice um, spider mesh here uh, inside the circles you can see that the mesh is quite pressed on the edges and it is quite elongated here but you can always adjust it the seam seems to be okay and when I see the rest of the face the elements are quite elongated I would say we can reduce the number of elements in this direction a bit but still seems good and seems fine so this is how we mesh a 3d crack geometry and it depends on the geometry it was a simple block and it was still easier to mesh then if we look at the simulation here for which we did 3d wedge simulations you can see that oh yeah the the mesh was quite complicated we had to um, mesh it differently here section it quite quite rigorously to structured to get a structured mesh here structured mesh on these sides and then a fine mesh on the crack tip which you can see which you can find here and uh, yeah and the simulations turned out pretty good um, so it completely depends on what your geometry is what your um, expectations are and then you can mesh it accordingly but the best the basic rules are the same and then if I run a simulation let's name it rename 3d crack uh, I would not be able to Hmm. And let's save it. Uh, no, 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 no. Save as. Ooh. Files are working directory. Oh no. Uh, training. Uh. 
file save as trainings work uh, 3D hmm. and with an active his oh I have to define a history output for the crack in the load step continue and crack number of contours is I'll make them 10 um, so you always have to define history output again you can go back and watch the 2d video to understand the why's and how's um, this is just expanding it to a new dimension um, simulation seems to be running uh -huh. quite slow let's look at the performances here CPU seems to be working and mm, hmm. seems to be picking up I don't know why it is taking this much longer to even produce the first frame uh, but no frame has been written yet I don't know why Maybe the mesh is quite large. I don't know. Okay, so I will. Mm hmm. And I didn't try it completely successfully. Uh, the usage of memory is rising. Mm hmm. Okay, so the 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 geometry was quite finely meshed. And therefore, it took some time for a backers to process it and convert it into an input file. And now, the simulation equations are being loaded up into the RAM, and probably will start giving us output now. Hmm. Um. The. The thing, w what I am doing right now is also interesting uh, to analyze and study, which usually we do not observe when, we or which usually is not taught in the process of running numerical simulations is how to um, optimize or how to um, how to see the underlying. Um, solution challenges um, so 
and how we can improve um, them as well so here for example I am l seeing that um, with a very um, simple defined mesh so it was just linear simulation it was not quadratic and um, it was just 3d in case of 2d it would have I would have been able to run simulations like multiple times but in case of 3d it is taking up a lot of RAM so I have 16 GB of RAM on this computer and it is occupying almost 13 GB of it right now just to upload this all, all the input data into it because I shifted from 2d to 3d and the thing which I'm doing here right now shows you so now I have started getting outputs so you, you can also see my way of looking at what the computer is doing how it is processing and it gives me an idea of hmm okay so this was the initial mesh and it is taking up this much memory and taking this much time um, to solve uh, one um, uh, time increment so if I reduce the mesh or uh, it, it, do I have a possibility of further refining the mesh or should I reduce the mesh size a little um, um, and also this gives me an idea of how much I can play with the simulation because it is if it is running fast then I can quickly change the parameters run again and again and see wh what is working best for me but if it is already a bit slow then I have to then I have to consider multiple factors into account um, that there are there are quite high computation costs involved so I better make my uh, decision based on some homework and um, some calculations prior to I run my simulation so I usually what I'm usually doing is I'm plotting some charts and graphs on Excel based on the few results which I have received and then um, accurately pinpointing to the parameters which I want to define and then running a few a fewer simulations to reach the to reach the point of satisfaction um, so for example here you will see that almost 13 GB of RAM and each increment takes quite some time to solve and quite some computation power to solve so I would not usually run this kind of simulation for multiple times if I would want to tune something I would reduce it to 2d or a very rough mesh and then run simulations multiple times there and after tuning only then I will make it so now the simulation is complete processing goes down memory comes down so this is the amount of memory 4.4 GB of RAM my computer is using in default state and you can see that the simulation took almost I'll say 9, 9 10 GB 9, 9 and a half GB of RAM um, so the simulation is done and let's see what results we have I hope we have the good ones yeah um, so first of all what I would like to do is I would like to Compute values which are closer to one. Um, hmm. um, quite quite deformed mesh, huh? Uh, because I defined a a very sharp load here and defined in caster conditions here, so probably this is because of that. But let's see the results. Um, so here you can see that the crack has um, quite nicely opened up. Um, and we can see uh, mm, the stress intensity concentration on the crack tip the typical kidney shape here and um, yeah uh, the interesting thing is that it is in 3d so it would be similar on the edges and then something inside now this kind of simulation gives a lot of results so if you want to calculate j integral you really have to know um, um, on on which node so probably it would be a little different on the surface than it would be inside and here you can see a small peek into it uh, uh -huh. um, let's section it from here 
let's section it from here and see what we have i want to see an undeformed shape and um, then i want to section it from here hmm. <laughs> you got manage I want to cut it in Y plane in the middle is it in the middle seems so um, let's see is the fun part okay hmm um, so yeah you see the crack tip here and if we look at the the Mises stress distribution profile you see that it is higher on the edges and then it drops and then it is also higher in the middle and then it drops and then it is higher here so this is also probably the j integral profile which will follow so the j integral will be the highest in the middle um, and somewhat medium on the edges and then quite low right inside the edges and then it will grow up to this shape and 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 that is why when we see cracks in physical 3d blocks they propagate can in in a concave geometry rather than in a in a linear geometry so if it is a thick geometry and the crack is propagating it probably it is concave so on the surface it seems smaller but if we go deep inside it the edge would be much uh, further than on the observer on the surface because the stresses uh, on the crack edge are quite higher and the crack leads or grows faster in the middle in, in, in 3d blocks so but yeah basically it can be um, uh, visualized or post-processed in any way possible but yeah um, you see that now today we were able to define um, 3d crack and um, yeah um, able to simulate it and um, see the results um, i hope you were able to um, learn from this simulation um, and were able to follow it all along and i hope you will like the video and if you need to know more about anything else you can just write it in the comments i will try to respond accordingly um, so yeah again happy simulating and have fun thank you bye